In this video guys, I'm going to show you how to change your kitchen tap. Anybody can do it, it's quite easy. I'm going to show you what tools you need and everything like that. Now the reason we're changing this kitchen tap is because the customer is suffering with something called water hammer. I'll show you what water hammer is now. That sound there, water hammer. But we're not actually going to use this. We're going to use this simple key. Literally. You get them, they go off. As you can see, you can take them off. Yeah, the left hole. So you just put, put it in there. No, no PTFB, no silicone, no nothing. Just put it in there. Have a look how it's working. Now this is a plumber's life right here. Yeah? No crack on show. Because uh, it's not cheap. <laughs> So I'll show you the water hammer, this is the tap, so when you open the tap, you can hear that, that sound there, water hammer. Now if I close that tap, and I move over to the bathroom, if I flush the toilet you can hear it, if I open this, you can hear that sound. That's water hammer. And the reason we were getting that water hammer sound is that you, they're getting it every time they open the cold taps, the toilet, anything to do with the cold, they're getting it. And the reason we're getting water hammer is because this is slightly dripping constantly and it's causing it to make that sound. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change this tap. So this is the tap kit that I've recently brought. It's called a Nerard Tools Tap Kit. It's a great piece of kit, it is about £150, so it's not cheap. It's got extension rods in it and stuff like that. I might do a review on it. If you guys want to review, let us know. Um, but this is like for taking off bath taps. These are some kitchen taps, the ratchet set and stuff like that. But we're not actually going to use this. We're going to use the simple keys, which are these ones here. Now, these are cheap, very cheap keys. Um, about five or tenner, and you get a, a whole bundle of them. Basically, get from Screw Fix or Tool Station. So, if you look into underneath the sink, you can have a look at this nut here. This nut right here is what holds this, the kitchen tap to the actual sink. We've got to undo this nut. Once we undo this nut, it will it was loosen up the tap. And then we have to take the pipe work off as well. So, what we'll do is we'll take the nuts off here. If you want, you can get angle grinder in here. Not an angle grinder, a multi tool. You can get a multi turn tool in here. Cut this off and get that out. Now, in this case, you can see it ain't going to be too hard to take it out because it's quite clean. But sometimes they're rusted, and if they're rusted, you've got to get a multi-tool on it or anything like that. Also, in this case, we're not going to be able to get them tap spanners on, which I showed you. We're going to use a normal spanner because it's forward-facing, and it'd be easy just to use a normal spanner. You've also got a little indent in the bottom here. Can you see in there? So you can get a, a flathead screwdriver sometimes in there, and you can just take the whole nut off. Sometimes you can do that, sometimes that's the easiest way. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is turn the water off. Now we've got two isolation valves here, but I don't really like using them. Because you start using them, they start leaking and you've got to replace them. So we're going to find the stop cock and we're going to turn the water off from the actual stop cock. So we've located the stop cock and we're turning it off clockwise. So make sure you turn it clockwise to turn the water off. So now we've got to make sure the water is actually off. So to prove it, simply just open up the taps, let the water run out, it should stop. Also go upstairs and open up um, taps upstairs in the bathrooms and stuff like that, let the water come out of the pipework. Once you see the water stopping and it completely stops, you're good to go. So this is the tap that we're fitting. I usually fit this brand here, Diva. I've had no issues with them in the past. I think they're decent quality, they're not overpriced. You know, you can get a grower and stuff like that, but Diva, you also get 12 years guarantee on them. Never had to use the guarantee. Don't know how it works, but yeah, these are the taps that I usually fit. So, with the taps, you get the flexible tap connectors. You get the actual tap itself. And then you get the fixing bolts underneath. Also, this is the base, this is the bottom of the tap. Let's open them up so you can see how they look. So 
what we're going to do first is put the actual tap together. So what you do, you get the bottom of the taps, and you've got these little holes here, one, two, and three. This one will go in any of any one of these. If if the hose is red and it's got a red um, hose thing around it, it's just an indication that's for the hot pipe. And the red one was usually going on the left. Yeah, the left hole. So you just put put it in there. No no PTFE, no silicone, no nothing. Just put it in there and tighten it up with your hand. As you can see, what Curtis is doing. He's just hand tightening it. You don't need no tools, you don't need no spanners or nothing like that. Just get it in there, hand tight. Just just make sure when you're doing it, guys, that these rubbers are intact. Some will have two, some will have one. Just have a quick look at them. Just make sure that they're intact. They usually are. Never had an issue with this brand. Yeah, so just tighten them all completely with hand. As tight as you can get it with your hand. And that's it. So that's done. So there the tails are connected. Now the tails, as you can see, they either need an isolation valve to go on or a coupler. Basically, this will screw onto like a coupler. So once you've done that, then you've got another hole there. As you can see right there. That hole, you've got to put this nut on it basically here. So that then just gets screwed on. Screw that on and then tighten it up with a flathead screwdriver. Yes, that's nice and secure. And then you can get rid of this nut here. Not rid of it, you just take it off because you're going to need this. And the way it would work is you'd get these two here. So imagine that is now sitting on the actual sink here. So this is on the sink. We get these two with the rubbats hitting the sink first, then the metal after, and then you get this, and it, that basically secures it in place. So you imagine that's the actual worktop. No, that's the actual sink where my hand is, and these two secure it. Just remember as well, you've got to fit this first as well. This has got to go, it's very important. This has got to go on top of here, into here. So we'll show you, we'll show you how to put these on. So we could have put them on first, but we're putting it on second. There's a little trick to it. That's it. That's it. So we made the tap up now. We're gonna show you how to take this tap off. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take off this secure nut and Curtis is using the easiest option, which is getting a flathead screwdriver under it and see if he can just twist it out. So go on, give it some, see if he can do it. Yeah, so he's managed to do it. That is the easiest method, as you can see. There's no point making life harder for yourself. Using all these fancy gadgets, we've just used a flathead screwdriver and it's done the job. That's it. The fixed nut has now come off and now what he's got to do so there was another way he could have did it so he could have just got a spanner on here and undone this or get the tap um, tools gone underneath and took that off I'll show you that in a minute so what he's got to do now is he's done undone the securing part now he's got to undo these nuts so you can take the copper pipes off Another methods of doing it Curtis found the easiest method which literally was get a flathead screwdriver in the bottom of this little groove here and it's undone the thread so just took the thread away took it off off the actual tap now the, the you, you're not always going to be that lucky you're not usually are so the other methods are getting a spanner on this little nut here and it's undoing it just just be patient being patient and just doing this just taking it off and then eventually using your finger or sometimes you can't even do that because space is more very restricted so you've got to get these tap keys so you get them they go up now you can see you can take them off for extra leverage when you're using these what you do is you get like a screwdriver inside of it and you use this as leverage and that would come off yeah so that's that's the easiest way to you guys can do it for you professionals out there and you want to spend a bit of money you can get these things which are now our tap kits 
and you'd get one of these, for example. They would go up here, and it would do the same job, and that would take it off, as you can see. The only, dis the only thing with these is they don't go the whole way sometimes. So sometimes they don't go the whole way, so you've got to start it off with them, and then you use these, which makes no sense to me. That's why I carry both. Yeah, and then with these, you, you fit on uh, extension brackets and stuff like that, which will give you a bit more leverage. So this is for the professionals, for the DIYers out there, you can just get these things from tool station and stuff like that, and a simple spanner, and it should be all right. So let's get back onto the job now, so we can finish what we're doing. But what the issue we're going to have now is these angles are going to stop us from pulling the tap up. So I'm going to show you a little trick of what I do to go over this. So the easiest thing to do is to get the tap, lift it as high as you can, give it give it a go because you never know. Sometimes it will go. But in this situation, you can see it won't go because it's too it's wedged in. So the easiest thing is to do is get a hacksaw or junior hacksaw and give it a cut. Now instead of cutting the top part here, the bottom part which is thickest, cut the thinnest part. The thinnest part up here. That's it. You can take that one out, that should come out. That's it. So that's one tap out there always clean the seating here just so it's a nice job so here's the tap so we've put that little bottom thing on the thing which sits on the actual sink that's on it's got a rubber washer on the bottom of it we've got our thread in here and we've got everything connected so this is the easiest way guys yes yeah? so and make your whole tap up first feed the flexible tap connectors through So another thing to remember guys is hot. The hot tap is always on the left. Yeah, so you always want to put the hot tap on the tap in the left. And also the way to figure out which one the front and the back of the tap is, if you have any holes like this, the like Allen key holes and DTC, that's usually the back. Yeah, because they want the best looking side to be at the front. So as you can see at the front on these diva taps, it says diva. Right on the front of the traps. So that's the easiest way to do it. So get the traps, put it in place. So this is the way we're going to put it on the actual tap. So you're going to have the, the rubber bit is going to be the top. The metal bit is going to be at the bottom. That's, and the nut is literally just going to be here. So Kurt is going to show you how we do it. It's a bit difficult because he's getting his hands in the way. But hopefully we'll get a view in a minute of the way he's doing it. It is quite tricky guys. Look. Have a look how it's working. Now this is a plumber's life right here. Yeah? No crack on show. Because uh, it's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so as you can see, he's got it on there. So he's managed to push it up there. So what he's going to do now is he's going to get that nut on underneath to secure it. And the easiest way to do it, instead of fiddling around, he's going to get the nut. He's actually going to put it inside this tap spanner here now. So he's got it inside there like that, and he's just going to use that to take it up and then screw it on. So there's a little trick of the trade. So what he's doing is holding the actual tails, as you can see. He's holding the tail now to keep the tap in place and he's tightening the tap now with the actual tap spanner. Now the tap has bent slightly at the top, which is not, it's, it's fine. We can straighten it back up. Keep it straight and you can go under there now and you can get his flathead, put it in there. He's got a little mini stubbery in there and he's gonna use that as leverage now to basically tighten up this tap spanner. I mean, tighten up the nut underneath the sink. So Curtis has used his little stubby to get into there, basically. He put it into that hole there, as you can see, and then he used it as extra leverage. So now that's in. We give it a little test to make sure we can't move it. Yeah, that's fine. So now that's done. 
what he's got to do is connect them flexies there onto the actual ISOs. If you can see it. Go on then. Now we've got to remember which one hot and cold was. This is cold, this is hot. So he remembers himself which one hot and cold was. That was another tip which I forgot to tell you guys. Always try to remember. So before you do it, you know, you can run the tap and uh, you can see which pipes get hot. And that's where you can label hot and cold. It's not a biggie because you can all swap them after, but you know, it's always best to do it once. You don't have to do it again. So he's simply just screwing on one. He doesn't need PTFE, he doesn't need no silicon, he doesn't need anything. The builders before put PTFE on these these valves here, we, we haven't put no PTFE on, we've just left them on. But you don't need no PTFE on them. Got a long tap That's it there. So, you see what Kurt has done with these now? He's not kinked them in any way. He's just turned them around in such a way that they're not kinked, but they fit. That's what you want to do with these flexes. Sometimes they are too long, but longer the better to be fair better for us as installers just in case they're further away we don't need couplers or anything like that so now he's just going to tighten them up he's going to give them a little nip with his nip up with his spanner he doesn't want to go he doesn't want to over tighten them because they've only got rubber washers underneath them yeah so he's going to give them a nice little nip until you until he feels that you know what they're, they're tight enough Curtis is down here turning this water back on. Turn the taps back off before you do this, guys. So we've turned all the taps back off. Anti clockwise. There's another tip for you guys. So you turn it all the way anti clockwise and a quarter turn back. That stops the, the stop tap from seizing, yeah? So the water's now back on. Let's get rid of any air in the, in the in this pipe work. Oh. Now we've successfully changed the trap. Uh, there's no more water hammer anymore. So you can hear the water hammer is solved now. So the water hammer's gone. So it was the trap that was causing the water hammer. Down here is nice, nicely done. Tap connectors are connected. There's no leaks. Coats is checking for that now. Let's just double check the water hammer sound. So we'll open up this tab. No water hammer. So that's it guys, that's how you replace the kitchen tap. And also water hammer, so now you, you've figured out how to sort out water hammer. Usually it's either on dripping taps or you'll get it on the toilet fill valves as well. So but yeah guys, like and subscribe, leave us a comment down below if you enjoyed it. Um, I'll have more videos coming up in the future. Every Sunday, 4 p.m., we drop a new video. So click the bell notification to be um, notified. Job done.